Hi guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be going over some more Jeopardy skit. Jeopardy skit stuff. Different things that I did, stuff like that. So, to give a little context, um, the Jeopardy skit was something I did for work. We had a host, three contestants, a human, a human, and a robot. And the robot had visualizations on his screen where he spoke and he had a part in the play in the skit, blah, 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 whatnot. So to give a little context on what we're creating today, we'll be creating the visualization for the screen, which was composited onto a blank screen. So it's just an After Effects animation, nothing too fancy. So let's take a little look and see what it looks like. Guest, Capcotron 9000. It's a pleasure, Taylor. I'm so excited to be the first of my kind on the show. And we are honored to have you here. Very simple. So, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to open up After Effects. Now that After Effects is opened, what we want to do is go into our project bin and go create a new composition. So we can call this Audio V, nothing too crazy, with 1920 by 1080 is completely fine. Frame rate, 59.94 frames per second, and the duration I have it set to around 40 seconds. This really depends on what you're making. I mean, if you're making a music visualization, it could be three minutes long, who knows, but for my purposes, it was just for voiceover in the Jeopardy skit, so this is completely fine for me. Next, what we need to do is import some audio to simulate, so what we'll do is drag and drop some audio that I used. This is one of the voiceover lines where the robot goes, like, great job, Fiona, this kind of thing going on. Works out great. So next, what we need to do in our audiovisual composition right down here is we will right-click New Solid. Doesn't matter what color it is, nothing like that. Just make sure it's 1920 by 1080, the same size as your composition. Let's call it Audio V Solid. Or, yeah. Cool. Next, what we need to do is open up our Effects panel. So Window, go to Effects and Presets, pops it open over here. Um, type audio spectrum and drag this onto your shape layer. Now it makes this nice line of dots, the first thing you'll see. Then the next you'll need to do is go back to your effects and presets and type polar coordinates. What this is going to do is make a circle for us. Cool. So what we'll do is in polar coordinates over in your effect controls. If your effect control window is not open, go down to work windows and workspaces and go to effect controls right here. So what we're going to do is change this type of conversion down to rect to polar and change the interpolation up to 100%. As you can see, it makes it tilt and curve into a circle. Cool. But right now, this circle is not complete. We need this circle to touch the ends. So what we're going to do is click on our audio spectrum layer and take these two little endpoints and move them to the edge of the screen. I'm holding shift as I do this so it doesn't go up and down on the X and Y axis. We're just going across the X. Now another way you can do this is just go up to start and endpoint and move the X over. You can drag it, use these, whatever you like. Cool. So next what we need to do is put some audio in here. And what we're going to do is take the great job audio and just drag it in. And then, since the audio is now in here, we can kind of drop down the tags right here to see the waveform. Here it is. We'll jump over here to where it's something bigger, zoom in on our timeline, and go back to our audio view solid. And at the top, for the audio layer, right here on the drop down, you can select great job, wave. So now, as we see, it looks like it's being affected through the audio, but not very much. It doesn't look very intense. So if we play with these settings a little bit, we can make it look pretty cool. So just to go top to bottom, what we're going to do is go to the start frequency. Let's change this to 30, our end frequency to around 1,000. Frequency band, bands, which is the number of little dots on the screen. Let's bring this up to about 200. Personally, that's what I like. You know, you can choose whatever you want. The maximum height, let's make that around 20,000, which is going to make it look pretty crazy. Immediately starting to jump off the screen. You can see how it's really looking kind of cool. Next, we're going to do audio duration. 
it doesn't really matter too much, but I have mine originally set to 95 milliseconds, audio offset zero, thickness, and softness. Let's take the softest down to 0%, and as you can see, the thickness is pretty good right now, but if you made it really fat, you can see what would happen with the softness turned on. With the softness turned up, it gets blurry looking. So let's make this around five on the thickness. What I'm gonna do is take the inside color and make it white. Take the outside color and make it white. Um, next, just to give you a little overview, I would normally keep mine to digital and change it to side B, which puts it on the outside. Side A is the inside. So side A and B is both. If you go to analog lines, it looks like the typical audio waveform kind of thing, which is pretty cool. And if you had it set to rect, it'd be all weird at 0%. It looks like this because it's a straight line. But we had our set rect to polar with 100%, so it's a circle. Let's And if um, it's just side A, it's only half the thing. That's pretty cool. So we'll go back to digital on side B. And that is part of our composition is almost done. So if we go back and look at our original video, what we're going to notice is that there are one, two, three extra rings of this audio spectrum inside of here. So what we're going to do to create that is just highlight both of these, right click, pre-compose. Let's call it um, audio V comp doesn't really matter what it's called then we'll press enter and call it number one to do this and then we'll hit command D to duplicate it drag this under then what we'll do is take scale and move it make it a little bigger and then command D to duplicate this one scale this one up a little bit and then command D to duplicate it again so there's three and there's four and we'll take this one and make it a little smaller. Next what we'll do is start from number two, hit R for rotation and rotate it some, hit R on number three, rotate it to the left, number four and we'll do a full rotation. Cool. Next what we're gonna do to change the colors of these, we're gonna go to effects and presets, type fill, grab our fill, drop it on here, Command C to copy this fill, highlight this, paste them all. I'm leaving the top one white, so it doesn't matter. Let's change this to, I don't know, a nice blue. We'll change this to orange. Everybody loves blue and orange contrast. It's like the best thing in the world. And we'll change this to like a teal or some kind of aqua looking color. And next what we're gonna do is actually change the opacity of these. So highlight them all, click T on your keyboard. We'll drop the opacity down on the blue, drop the opacity down on the orange, and drop the opacity down on the middle one. And now we have a duplicated composition of this stuff, which is pretty darn cool. What else is next? So if we go back to our original, let's just look at it. You can see in the background there's like almost like the matrix looking numbers falling behind it, which is totally fine. Um, I'm not gonna make that from scratch. What I did was I found a, I found a matrix style video that I downloaded on the internet, just found it somewhere. Um, and what we'll do is we'll drag and drop this matrix data video and we'll drag it to our bottom of this, which is this video. And we'll scroll through the matrix data it's just one long video of different little matrix data thingies. The code that falls on the screen. If you're curious to where I got this image, feel free to send me a message. I'll send you a link. Um, what we're going to do is actually scale this footage up. Now it's pretty overpowering, and in the video it was white. So what we're going to do is type saturation for hue and saturation on the matrix footage. Take the master saturation and drop it down. And what we're also going to do is put T on the footage and make it a little bit opaque to be in the background. It's pretty cool. And what I'm also going to do is actually duplicate the layer and put P for position and move it over some to fill the gaps, which is pretty cool. 
And what we'll do is we'll kind of offset the timing of it so it looks a little different. And I think we're missing one more thing to complete this animation. If we look, it looks kind of blue behind it. So what we'll do, really simple, real fast, we'll right click, right, uh, right click inside of here, new solid. We'll call it blue because it's already blue. Normally you would change this color right here to something else. Um, hit blue, drag this under our pre comps, hit T for opacity, and drop it down to a nice blue tint. And that is how you make this simple vocal animation. And what you could do is duplicate all of this multiple times to create, you know, audio V comp 1, audio V comp 2, audio V comp 3. Um, or audio V one, two, three, four for different vocal lines. So you could put new lines in here and have different versions of it to have for your video. So yeah, um, I hope this little short animation tutorial was helpful. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I will be releasing a lot more on the Digital Jeopardy skit soon. And if you request it, I can send a link out to the skit itself. So you take a watch. Maybe it's funny. Maybe it's not. Um, but hey. Thanks, guys, and uh, like I said, please like and subscribe, and I'll, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.